play. Are you in a good relationship with Kola? Uh, well, I don't think I don't think we're really in. That. The last time I saw him, he said, he, the, I, and I will quote his words: "Do I want to do fire for fire?" And I asked him, "Sabashi fire for fire, Shema Joe," because that was all. That, because the idea is not about look as we, the, the whole Nigeria is in, in fire. He asked me if I want to do fire for fire. If the idea is that I'm already in fire, so let's do it as long as there will be something proceed to come out that I will be able to take care of my family and people who like who just need help in general. So yeah, we're not in good terms, and uh, and it's sad for me to say that. You know, I, I don't I don't want to have an issue with my older brother. He's my older brother. I love him. You know, what I, mean? I hope he loves me, but I have no ill will. I'm just saying that this is a is our collective responsibility, and if you're not doing your part, then you should just step aside. It's very simple. Mm. I mean, do you blame him for the manner in which things have gone? Do you think that the legacy of the MKO Abiola uh, would have been properly sustained yeah, better than it is right now? Yeah, I definitely do because he was in he was he was in he was in a pivotal position, especially after the whole crisis. He could have he could have been a voice. He could have been a strong voice of true democratic values. He could have. He chose not to. Apparently, at the time, my father was still in jail. He was um, having relations with Babagida's daughter for, for Christ. I, I don't. I don't want to. You know, it's just sad. You know, I, I, I'm, I actually even was a little a little bit pleased that my father didn't all get to come out and see what his first son had turned out to become. So you are unhappy with him? I am unhappy. I think Nigerian people are unhappy. You saw what they how, how many people voted for him when he said he wanted to be president. I wonder how he thought he could be president. You cannot manage Abiola Empire. How do you want to manage Nigeria? How does that work? This is the problem in Nigeria. People are not showing capacity in their own little sphere spaces of work and they then want to now get the higher position you don't deserve a higher position so you didn't vote for your brother i, the, I told him i said you're not going to use my money to camp to, to 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 do campaign give me my money first and go on campaign do you think he owes you anything he owes me a lot he, he, well first of all if he just listens to what my father said in the will and does what he's rightfully supposed to do like every other person has done this is not the first to to be the first son of a child of, we have the followers as an example these people are thinking, we have lost so much. There's so much property that my father had in this country that we can never get back. Because people have sat on it and they're using it to take care of their families. But the issue here is, who is to lose? It's, part, it's, it's, it's our money that was used to buy these things. Those properties now, you cannot build them today with the kind of money you're going to spend. I'm talking about the silo in Kwara State, Lafayette, 20,000 metric ton silo with the 10,000 hectares of land. How much do you want to pay for that land now? You know, it's sad that, you know, your father has reached a certain level and you cannot continue from where he stopped. I would like him to explain to me where exactly he has gone with, with, this, with, this, with this direction. It's like you're going down a dead-end road and you are seeing the signs and you still keep going. I, I don't understand this. And this is 30 years down the line. So it's not like I'm waiting. I waited a year after my father died and I'm making these accusations. I'm saying people have died in this 30 years. We're talking Abiola children who could not buy, who could not do or buy medicine just to take care of themselves. This is sad. And I'm sure my father will not be pleased about it. So mm -hmm. I am not pleased. And it's not because, like I said, it's not because I want... It's like I wake up in the morning and my phone is inundated with text messages of people saying, I need help, I need help. How many people can I help? And if I want to help somebody, I have to first be able to help myself. It's important that we do things the right way. And that's, I think that's just my issue on this. It, have you been able to, to speak to uh, Kola Abiola? Uh, this about one. some of these grievances that you have, especially when, because there are those who believe that MK Abiola's wealth would have been a generation of wealth because he had such, so much wealth and spread across the country such that uh, there are those who believe that no Abiola blood should ever be poor based on what Abiola had. You're absolutely right. And you have to understand that what I'm talking about are just the properties in Nigeria. This is not where Abiola had his real wealth. Abiola really? had those companies in Nigeria just to help Nigerian people. They were losing money. They were bleeding money, but he did this because he understood that Nigerian people needed something to do. Give somebody nothing to do and they'll pick up a gun. You need something to do. So he understood that. What I'm just telling you right now is very simple. You see, Abiola's wealth was from outside this country. Abiola did not do anything outside. It. He was he was an intelligent accountant. When he went, when he, he was ITT, was the um, uh, state director of ITT or something like this, he, uh, there was the monies that were being owed that company, when he was able to retrieve the money from that military government, I think it was under Murtala at the time, he went back to the to his masters in in the West, I think it was England. When he got there, he said, oh, this is the check that your money you'll be owing. And then they were now going to offer him like a commission. He said, no, 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 give me shares. So my father has shares. So I told Barakola when I got back to Nigeria, I said, the monies that are outside the country, I don't want to disturb you with that one. 
the world. That is for you. Eat it, die. I don't eat it. Do whatever you want. That's your business. But the ones that are in Nigeria, we will die dead. Mm. Have you been able to take that up? Some of the properties and the, some of the businesses. Like in. I said, we we took over Concord. That is being uh, at the time we took it over. He went ballistic. Took me to the KBC Akiolu's of uh, Palace to to tell me why I should leave the place. <laughs> I'll even give you a funny story. The day I went to that court, you know, this would have been maybe 18 years had passed. I'd been in Nigeria. I'd been working in Osho State at that time with Ogbeni Wafa Rogoshola. Thank God for that, prayer, for him. Because if not for him, I wouldn't probably have had the courage to do what I did. I, it was the second term. I went to, I was on my way to Oshogbo and I just kept on thinking because I had, I just had, I had two kids, young kids at the time and I had to go to Oshogbo. I stayed three months. Then I'll be relieved. Somebody else will come then I'll come back home. That was not a way to raise, a, to have a, a young family. But anyway, I was doing it. And on the way there, I was just thinking that if anything happened to me on this road, now what would I say? But we had properties in Ikeja, right by the airport. We had properties in, in Oshodi. We have properties. And these properties are not just properties. These are billions of Naira, today's money. So I am maybe... And they still there now. This, Concord is still there. These properties were put under Abiola's name. You can't sell something that is not your name. So the idea for Ajari, and I think that was his idea, was that if we all don't come together and decide to sell something, nothing can be done. But what Bakola, I think, was doing has been he was doing things in our absence. And now that we're all old enough, and when we if I enter the property, the, those that he had maybe done these shady deals with will now be attacking it, will be come, going to meet him. He's now attacking me. I wasn't there when you made those agreements, and I'm not in any way. But you, you, you had Jamie is your brother. Yeah. Um, uh, Afsat is your yeah, sister. sister yeah. uh, uh, they are older uh, and they're perhaps closer in age to, to yeah, color. Yeah. All of these grievances, have they taken it up with him? Well, you know, I, 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 I realized something once I, go, once I go older. You know, when, I told you I was real young when this happened. Apparently, maybe there was some kind of politics happening within the family that I wasn't aware of, or maybe I was too young to understand the, the, uh, what was happening. Because me and going to America, America is the kind of place where you speak your mind and it's a uh, you know, freedom of speech kind of thing. So I learned to be open. So I, I understand. I think for them, they're just a little bit still traumatized by the whole event. You know, you have to understand that. Me, I lost my father when I was only about like 11 or 10. They saw my dad throughout. So they had a more um, intense relationship with him. It was a little bit harder for them to like come to terms with his loss. You know, me, younger, you know how we say kids are Brazilian. They can, they can just, you know, they move on really quick. So I guess I was lucky in that sense. But I know that they're also not pleased with the situation and they're also working with me towards getting us back on track mm. 